Hi folks, Bill Steele here with 3D Chameleon and uh, I thought I'd give you a quick little tip video on an issue that we've discovered in the field. Um, we had customers complaining that their BMG uh, extruder clones were failing to load the filament um, through the drive gears. It would load in and then just stall before it hit the drive gears and um, they were complaining that the 3D Chameleon wasn't loading it when in fact it actually turns out it's the issue with this extruder. Um, and interestingly enough, it's not an issue with all of them. Uh, it is an issue specifically with uh, this type where this drive gear actually slides back and forth. So let me disassemble it and show you what the issue is. So if I take this off, actually let's put this one back on here. Take this one it in here. So under normal circumstances, let's get that lined up right, there we go. Under normal circumstances your two hub screws here line up perfectly, um, but on these units that have this uh, lax tolerance here you can see that this gear moves all the way over and in fact it moves so far over that now we do no longer have the hob gears driving it. We have a flat surface driving it. Um, now you would think that that would actually pick it up, but it turns out that that gap is actually smaller than the filament. And the filament will not load if that's the case. Um, so the idea here is that we just need to constrain this um, and keep it from moving over to this direction. Now again, this doesn't affect all of them, um, but if you have this issue, just check this and you'll see that um, you know you can it's pretty easy to fix, uh, but that's pretty significant deviation there. It's actually almost two millimeters, um, which is you know the diameter of the filament. so you can see how it could have troubles loading. So let me show you how to quick an easy fix for this. I'm just going to take a uh, one of my Allen keys and just pop up under there. just open that up just like that. So we don't need to pull it out all the way. In fact, uh, sometimes they're a little hard to get out. You can actually drive this pin out. And we can use another Allen key and just push in on that to drive that out. Um, and if you've assembled these, you know they have these two bearings inside of here that just you know glide on the inside of this. Um, you want that. That makes it a really nice uh, setup. But what we're going to do is we're going to build a little repair kit using a small piece of PTFE tube and a razor blade. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a small section off about two millimeters and I'm going to slice down the middle of one so that I can open this up and I'm going to take it and the side with the large gear we're just going to slide this onto that just like that. So there you can see I've created a spacer. We can now reassemble this. So the small end in goes into the the uh, hole that's already there and we just so that goes into this small end goes into there and then we have the large end here that snaps in just like that and we can push our uh, pin through to center that. But now with that installed you'll see that we have no side to side motion we still have our spinning motion, that's fine, but there's no side-to-side -side motion. And when we reinstall this, you'll see that it is lined up perfectly and you cannot move that to get it out of alignment. So that should be all it takes to get this working again. Go ahead and reassemble this. Just like that. So a quick little simple fix using uh, some of the uh, pieces that they provide in their kit, um, just a small section of PTFE tube, cut it, slide it over the end of that to keep that uh, from sliding back and forth. So, thanks for watching.